Hello students, I am Manoj Kundare, the Assistant Professor of Electronic Science. Welcome back to our e-learning platform. In previous video, we have seen the types of modulations. In that video, we have also seen the modulation and demodulation technique. The link of the previous video is available in the description box. Please check it. Now, in this video, we are going to see the concept pulse code modulation. The pulse code modulation or PCM is a method used to digitally represent sampled analog signals. The PCM output is in the coded digital form. It is in the form of digital pulses of constant amplitude, width and position. The information transmitted in form of code words. A PCM system consists of a PCM encoder that is transmitter and a PCM decoder that is receiver. The essential operations in PCM transmitter are sampling, quantizing and encoding. That is, the PCM is a digital technique of the modulation, okay, in which the output of the PCM is in coded digital form. Let's see the process in the PCM. The first process is sampling process. If the message signal is analog in nature, that is our speech or video, then it required to convert it into a discrete time signal. For that purpose, the sampling process is used. By using sampling process, we convert continuous time signal into discrete time signal. That means if our analog signal like video, normal human speech is analog in nature, then we have to convert it into a discrete time that means in discontinuous signal. For example, here a continuous analog signal is shown which is given to the sampler and the output of the sampler is in the discrete time analog signal okay i hope you all understand the difference between continuous time analog signal and discrete time analog signal okay the sampling process should satisfy the following requirements sampled signal should represent the original signal faithfully we should be able to reconstruct the original signal from its sampled version okay there are mainly two theorems associated with this sampling process sampling theorem or shannon's theorem and the nyquist theorem let's see the statement of both theorem first one is sampling theorem or the shannon's sampling theorem its statement is a continuous time signal can be represented in its samples and can be recovered back when the sampling frequency fs is greater than or equal to the twice of the highest frequency component of the message signal that is fs greater than or equal to twice fm that means this theorem states, states that the sampling frequency should be equal to or greater than the twice of highest frequency component to reconstruct or to recover the original signal okay and the next theorem is the nyquist theorem the nyquist theorem says that to produce the original analog signal the sample's rate must be at least twice the highest frequency in the original signal that means the nyquist rate is equal to 2 into f max where f max is the maximum frequency component nyquist rate is also called as Nyquist sample rate. Sampling rate is inverse of sampling interval. Sampling rate or the sampling frequency is Fs is equal to 1 upon Ts. Okay. These are the two theorems associated with the sampling process and in general these two theorems are similar in nature. Okay. I hope you all understand these two theorems. Now let's see the quantization process. The quantization is a process of approximation or rounding off. The sample signal in PCM transmitted is applied to the quantizer block. The quantizer converts the sample signal into approximate quantized signal which consists of only finite number of predecided voltage levels. 
ओके ईच सैंपल वैल्यू एट द इनपुट ऑफ द क्वांटाइजर इज एप्रोक्सिमेटेड और राउंडेड ऑफ टू द नियरेस्ट स्टैंडर्ड प्रिसाइडेड प्री डिसाइडेड वोल्टेज लेवल दीज स्टैंडर्ड लेवल्स आर कॉल्ड एज क्वांटाइजिंग लेवल्स दैट मींस इन शॉर्ट वी कैन से दैट द क्वांटाइजेशन इज द प्रोसेस ऑफ एप्रोक्सिमेशन और द राउंडिंग ऑफ ओके दैट मींस इफ वी गिव द सैंपल सिग्नल दैट मींस द डिस्क्रीट टाइम सिग्नल to the quantizer block and this quantizer convert them into an approximate quantized signal which are the which are having the pre decided voltage levels let's see the quantization process on the diagram okay this is the process of quantization in which this is this one is the analog signal okay here are सम लेवल्स आर गिवन क्यू जीरो क्यू वन क्यू टू क्यू थ्री क्यू फोर क्यू फाइव क्यू सिक्स एंड क्यू सेवन दैट मीन्स देर आर टोटल एट लेवल्स दिस सिग्नल इज डिवाइडेड इन टू टोटल एट लेवल्स इच हैविंग सेम लेंथ ओके वी एच इज द हाई वोल्टेज और हाई एंड वी एल स्टैंड फॉर लो ओके लेट सी द डिस्क्रिप्शन द इनपुट सिग्नल X of T is assumed to have a peak-to-peak -peak swing of VL to VH volts. That means it may have the VH to VL swing. This entire voltage range has been divided into Q intervals of each size S. Yes. Okay, this total swing is divided into the equal time interval having S. Yes. Okay. S yes, is called as the step size, and its value is given as S yes, is equal to V H minus V L upon Q. At the center of these ranges, the quantizing levels Q zero, Q one, Q two, Q zero, Q one, Q two, Q seven are placed at the center of this state. Okay, okay. At this state, we have Q zero. Here we have Q one. Here we have Q two as so. X Q T represents the quantized version of X of T. We obtain X Q of T at the output of the quantizer. When X of T is in range of delta zero, then corresponding to any value of X of T, the quantizer output will equal to Q zero. That means we can see this concept on this diagram. sorry on this diagram here if the range is here any at any range it is rounded off to the q0 value if the value is between this range then it is rounded off to this value if the value is present between these two range then this is quantized or approximated at this value i hope you all understand the concept of quantization or rounding of process okay now let's see the pcm transmitter or the pcm encoder this is the block diagram and waveform of pcm encoder or transmitter in this block diagram we can see number of blocks such as a low pass filter sample and hold circuit quantizer encoder parallel to serial converter and pulse generator this is the continuous time signal this is pulse generator output this is flat top pam this is the quantized pam and it is the pcm output let's see the details about it in detail operation of pcm transmitter or encoder the analog signal or the x of t is given to the low pass filter which has the cutoff frequency Fc is equal to W hertz. That means, or that is, X of T will not have any frequency component higher than W. We know that the low pass filter can only allows the low frequency signal. The high frequency signals are eliminated from it. Okay. For that purpose, the continuous time signal is given to the low pass filter. 
the band limited analog signal is then applied to the sample and hold circuit that means the higher frequency components are reduced and the remaining signal is given to the sample and hold circuit where it is sampled at adequately high sampling rate the output of sample and hold circuit is flat top pm signal okay these samples are then subjected to the quantization process in quantization process it is rounded off to the nearest standard value and in this process the noise is reduced the quantized pam pulses are applied to the encoder which is basically an a to d converter each quantized level is converted into an n bit digital word the encoder output is converted into stream of pulses by parallel to serial converter the pulse generator produces a train of rectangular pulses these signals acts as the sampling signals for the sample and hold circuit okay now let's see once again the operation of the pcm transmitter the continuous time signal that means this signal is given to the low pass filter in low pass filter the higher frequency components are eliminated and the remaining frequency signal or the remaining band limited signal is given to the sample and hold circuit in the sample and hold circuit it is sampled to a highest rate and its output is the flat top pam signal okay the sample and hold circuit is sample the signals on this pulse generator pulse train okay the flat top pam signal is then given to the quantizer and in the quantizer block this flat top pm signal is quantized that means it is rounded off towards the standard value and this is the quantized pam signal this quantized pam signal then given to the encoder block this encoder is generally an a analog to digital converter this digital data or this encoded signal is given to the parallel to the serial converter and at the output of the parallel to serial converter we get the digital encoded output or the digital code word output i hope you all now understand the working of the pcm transmitter now let's see the working of pcm receiver here in pcm rece receiver there are number of blocks such as regeneration circuit serial to parallel converter pulse generator decoder low pass filter etc let's see the details about it one by one the pcm signal is contaminated with noise at the receiver that means during the transmission the noise may get introduced in the pcm signal this the regeneration circuit will separate the pcm pulses from noise and will reconstruct the original pcm signal that means the regeneration circuit is reduces or separate the noise and produces the original pcm signal this reconstruction is possible due to digital nat nature of the signal this reconstructed signal is given to the serial to parallel converter the signal is given to the serial pa to parallel converter the signal is now the clean pcm its output is n digital pcm word and given to the decoder circuit the decoder is generally a digital to analog converter which performs exactly opposite operation of the decoder the decoder circuit is generally digital to analog converter which performs exactly opposite operation of the encoder the decoder output is sequence of quantized multi level pam okay this quantized pam signal is passed through this low pass filter to recover the analog signal x of t back again okay i hope now you all understand the working principle of pcm transmitter or encoder and the pcm decoder now let's see the advantages of the pcm the pcm has very high noise immunity it is possible to store the pcm signal due to its digital na nature 
we know that the pcm signal is digital and to store any information which is in digital in nature is very simple okay for that purpose the pcm signal is possible to store due to its digital nature it repeaters can be placed between the transmitter and the receiver the repeaters can regenerate the received pcm signals the pcm is convenient for long distance communication the communication process through pcm is secure there are some disadvantages of the pcm such as the encoding decoding quantizing circuitry of pcm is complex pcm requires large bandwidth the applications of the pcm are pcm is used in digital telephone system it is used in space communication i hope you all understand the concept of pulse code modulation technique thank you